Hello, come on in. There's always the idea that you might think that psychology has to do with suffering and mental disease. Obviously, suffering and, for instance, depression or obsessive compulsive uh, disorders, etc., are part of what we do in our consulting room. And it's not so much that people who have these problems are different from the rest of us. It's people who have these problems that have a much bigger intensity of those moods and situations compared to others. And the fabulous thing is that we also have a look at what's going on really well in people. For instance, this book over here is from the Chicago School of Psychology and it talks about happiness. It talks about what goes well in life. So today what we're doing is we're having a good look at what's going wrong, but we're also having a very good look at what's going right to make it grow. The great opportunity is it's one of the only human relationships in which you have a certain guarantee that the person in front of you is there to help you grow. They do not have an interest of their own beyond the money you pay them and beyond the joy of watching you grow and develop. One of the best ways to see what somebody thinks and does is to have a good look at their bookcase and see what they've been reading. We've got things about sexuality, emotional intelligence, psychiatry, different schools of thought, some neurology. We've got lots, thing, lots of things about bringing up children. There's a lot of literature too, because literature gives you a great feel of intimate human situations that are always there. We've got a lot of philosophy too, because it has to do with the meaning of life. It has to do with how different people have seen the world. And this is one of the big books, for instance. It gives us a very good idea of how what we do and what we see is quite relative, so we don't get too cheeky as professionals. In other relationships, for instance, with our friends or parents, it's always a give and take. Your parents love you, they want you to grow up, they want you to be happy and well. So they expect things from you. Your therapist does not. Your therapist is there to be. That's it. If you go to see a priest, they want to save your souls, which is perfectly all right but they have an intention regarding your future. In psychotherapy, nobody should have any intention. You, you have to be there for whatever comes and be absolutely neutral in the sense of directing your patient. Obviously, when a patient comes in, they want to live, they want to be happy, they want to be well. But you're not allowed to push them in directions that would be your choice. But all of these things about theories and books and studying, they're all very well. Now, the main thing is how we're going to use it in our real life, because psychology, psychotherapy, is really, really practical. So I'll tell you about this in a different way. As I was saying, books are all very well, but what really counts is practicality. So let's see how we use psychology, what we do with it to make our lives better. Psychotherapists usually know what is theirs, what's their mess, and what their patient's mess is, and you can differentiate it pretty well. The other question is your hands have to be very clean, you have to not bring any contamination into your patient's setting, and your setting, the place where you see your patient, has to be clean. Everybody has rubbish, everybody has dirty things, so the first thing you have to do is go into a therapy session where everything is nice and clean, ready to make something new. And today we're going to make something, we're going to make something really practical. This is a roast chicken and that's what we're going to eat today. In life, just like in the kitchen, there are things that we keep that are pretty unhealthy. So what we do is we try to keep the unhealthy bits out. These can be feelings, they can be habits, it can be a way of living your life that is not particularly useful for you. So what you do in therapy is that you put it away or you recycle it. So we put it in the right place so that we don't damage anybody else. For instance, we put our anger into sports or into literature. And all of these pre creative processes of where we put our feelings are very useful. We learn to do that in the consulting room. Usually, people have a recipe for life. That recipe was made when we were pretty young, when we were children, and a lot of that recipe has to do with family tradition. 
We make a sort of map of what our life ought to be like. For instance, according to my family recipe, there should be a number of herbs on this chicken. But really, if you want to be absolutely practical and realistic, you can't always find your family recipe in life. Or you didn't like it at all and you have to make a new one. So according to yourself, you're going to have to make up exactly the way you want to live your life. For instance, I'm going to put a lemon into this one. And if I look at the herbs I've got, perhaps I'll have a look outside and see what else I can get. Because you always have to live your life according to your present. They're the same rules that were applied to your parents or grandparents certainly may not apply to you. Some do, but some do not. So you have to dare to be creative. Accidents happen when you're living. Nobody can cook without breaking things, cutting themselves, making a mess. So in our lives, it's absolutely normal and natural for things to happen that break, that can hurt us, that can hurt others. Things take time to cook. In therapy, the same thing happens. It, set, it takes a certain amount of time for us to achieve a number of processes that will transform us. So you can see things we do in the kitchen and things that we do in our consulting room are very, very similar. As you can see, it's extremely practical. These are the results in your life. Results will be pretty similar. You also have something to dig your teeth into by the end of your sessions, hopefully. Hope you enjoy.